Hi everybody, today I want to show you how to do a MANOVA in SPSS, just in case I don't have time to talk about it during the lab period. Um, in front of me, or on your screen as you can see, is exercise 20, which will eventually be an assignment for this class. And I just kind of first wanted to show you the, the cells and basically how you're supposed to interpret the, um, the way the data is written in there because it's not the most clear. I think we've all kind of known with um, some of these assignments that the for, the how the data looks on paper might not be exactly what you think it's it's telling you. So in this case we have two independent variables. One is gender, the other one is age, and in this case we have three dependent variables. One of them is an aggression score toward friends, one is an aggression score toward parents, and the third is an aggression score toward strangers. So because we have more than one dependent variable, that's what makes this a MANOVA as opposed to a two-way ANOVA. Okay. Um, the cells themselves, let me take, let me just draw this little box around, let me find my square box, okay. I'm going to draw this a square box around the first cell here, uh, around the numbers 8, 7, and 8. So in this case, with those numbers, okay, the first number 8 represents the aggression score towards friends. The 7 represents the aggression score towards parents for that same person. And then the third, eight, the third score, which is also 8, happens to be the aggression score towards strangers for that person number one. So in so each grouping of three is essentially a dependent measure. So the first number in each group of three is the aggression score toward friends. The second is the aggression score towards parents. The third score is the aggression towards strangers. So that's how you're going to interpret each grouping of three, okay? And it's going to be very similar to uh, what you did for two-way ANOVA. You're going to see, you're going to code your data based on how the um, independent variables intersect. So in the case of the box that I just had of eight, seven, and eight, that one person, that one person's data, that person is a female and they're a young person. So when we go into SPSS, we want to code those accordingly. So let me open up SPSS, like a blank data file for us. So first thing I'm going to do, first of all, is go to variable view and type in my variable names. So gender, age, and then um, the three dependent measures. And so that will be friends, parents, and strangers. Okay. The dependent measures are numerical values, so we're going to make them scale variables. Okay, so I'm going to put a ruler next to each of those three for friends, parents, and strangers. And then for gender and age, they are categorical variables, so I'm going to make them, I'm going to label them as nominal. Okay. And then I'm going to define the codes I want to use for gender and age. So click on the values box for gender, hit the little blue square to type in the codes. So on that sheet for exercise 20, I see females listed first, so I'm going to say one is a female and hit add, two is a male, and hit add, and then hit OK. And I'm going to repeat the same process now, but for age, click on the values box, then the blue box next to it, and I'm going to type in, one represents a young person, two represents a middle-aged child, and three represents an older child, I guess, adult, young adult, and hit OK. So at that point, now we're going to go back into data view 
and start t typing our data into SPSS. So in the case of that first box that I just talked about, which, hold on one second. So here's that exercise 20 sheet again. Let's handle person 1, this 8, 7, and 8 that we talked about earlier. So that cell is the intersect of female and young. So this person is a young female. So in SPSS, I'm going to code 1 for female, 1 for young, and then I'm going to type in the dependent measures associated with that person. So for person number one, one for female, one for age, and then eight, seven, eight. So let's look at person two now, which would be this right here, the five, the six, and the eight. So that person, once again, is still a female and a young person, so it's going to be one for female, one for young, and then five, six, eight. And essentially, everybody in the top left cell is going to be coded one for female and one for young. So you're going to keep repeating that process. So when you go to the next cell, so if you go, you know, one cell over to the right, so we're in the top middle cell, the only thing that's going to change is, so when you go into the this cell over here, you're still going to code 1 for females, but now it's going to be code 2 for middle age. And then you would type in the, the dependent measures associated with each person. And then when you go to the top right cell here, it's going to be a 1 for females, 3 for old, and then you type in the, the dependent scores. When you go down to the um, bottom left corner, it'll be 1 for males, 1 for young, and so on and so forth. I've created the, oops, sorry about that. I've created the data set um, for exercise 20, and if if you've done everything correctly, you should have 24 uh, rows of data. Um, and obviously no blanks because there's no missing data. And when you're done with, you know, when you're done inputting all the data, you're going to go to Analyze. Go to General Linear Model, just like for ANOVA, except now this time you're going to pick the multivariate option because you have more than one dependent variable. So let me clear those out as if they weren't there. All of my dependent measures, the friends score, the parents aggression score, and the strangers aggression score, they're all going to go in the box that says dependent variables. And gender and age are my independent variables or fixed factors. And then just because we'll probably need them for the homework, click on the options button and click descriptive statistics so that way you can actually get um, your tab the table of means that you need. And then you say OK. And you will get an output box. OK. So it'll give you a table of descriptive statistics for each dependent variable. It'll give you a multivariate table, and it will give you your um, univariate effects as well. And um, we will go over how to um, interpret those in lab as well as in class. Um, I believe one of the homeworks. I don't. I don't know if actually it's this homework or not. But just to be on the safe side, it may actually ask for what are the correlations between uh, the, your three dependent variables in your study. Only because um, we haven't done that in a while, just as a, ref as a refresher, correlations you can get easily by going to Analyze, down to Correlate, and pick Bivariate. 
and then just move over the three dependent variables. Okay, only the numerical ones. So that friends, parents, and strangers, that's all you can do. And just say, okay, and at the end, it will it'll um, make you a table of, co of correlation matrices as well as give you the p-values associated with um, those correlations. And it will put a star next to each one that's significant. So that should be enough for you to actually type type in the data and um, at least get the printout for class and then like I said we'll do a lab in class uh, similar to this and I'll, I'll explain how to read these tables and I'm sure Dr. Geiker will do the same thing uh, during class. So I hope this helps and um, I'm sure everybody will do okay.